May I now request the Honorable Chief Justice of the Bombay High Court to deliver the presidential address. Honorable Dr. Justice Dhananjay Chandrachur, Chief Justice of India, Madam Kalpana Das, my esteemed sister and brother judges, Honorable Miss Justice Mary Baker, former judge of Supreme Court of Ireland and current chair, Electoral Commission of Ireland and members of his del her delegation who visited uh, our High Court today. Dr. Biren Saraf, Advocate General, State of Maharashtra. Mr. Sangram Desai, Chairman, Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa. Mr. Nitin Thakkar, President, Bombay Bar Association. Mr. Prashant Relekar, President, Advocates Association of Western India. Ms. Farzana Behram Kamdeen, President Bombay Incorporated Law Society, Office Bearers of Bar Associations, Learned Senior Advocates, and Members of Bar, Members of Registry, and Friends, Namaskar. Mumbai hai aap ki, aur aaj mera ghar bhi hai. Aap ke ghar mein mein hoon, aur aap mere ghar mein hai. We are all delighted and filled with emotions to receive Honorable Justice Dr. Dhananjaya Chandrachur, Chief Justice of India amongst us. Welcome home, sir. Welcome, ma'am. Sir, with your elevation as 50th Chief Justice of India in November 2022, we have taken pride in asserting that a son of the soil of this great state of Maharashtra with a distinguished career in law has reached most deservedly the pinnacle of Indian judiciary. We still hold that pride and will continue to do so in future as well. I can attest, as everyone present here will, that Justice Chandrachud has been true to his conscience. Sir, you have brought to the judiciary of the country not only your abundant wisdom and fairness, but your passion for a different work culture, grace and courage. You have certainly made it a better institution. We all speak of you with love and reverence. In a society governed by any, pol any political government, be it a democracy, democracies of different kinds, a monarchy or even a military rule, what, what are the two most valued aspirations people aspire for? To my mind, it is liberty and equality. Permit me to say, my Lord, you have guarded these twin values of liberty and equality over jealously. You have served not as a judge of the highest court of the land, but throughout you have been an advocate of justice. You, by your gentle ways, have influenced nearly every corner of the judiciary. We all speak of you with pride, reverence and smile. I have had a privilege of sharing the bench with you. Believe me, sir, seated your left on the bench I was always filled with the feeling of inadequacy, but the very next moment I always found myself at such an ease that I could give my inputs to the matter on board. As a mentor, you have inspired many, but perhaps none more than law students. I still remember your address at the convocation ceremony at Dr. Ramanor Lohia National Law University, Lucknow, where I, where I was also part of the function. It was a treat to listen to you on that occasion. Graduating students after your address were filled with emotions, encouragement, and a sense of gratitude. Much has been said by the pre my previous speakers about your various achievements and contributions made by you. However, I would like to highlight your efforts and endeavors in advancing the e-court project, which aims to digitize the judiciary at all levels. Under your leadership, the project has introduced several innovative measures, including courts for adjudicating cases online, the interoperable criminal justice system, the real-time data exchange between courts and police, development of user-friendly e-filing software, implementation of online payment systems and establishment of e-seva kendras for those lacking internet access. Additionally, Initiatives such as national service and tracking of electronic processes and a comprehensive judgment search portal 
have enhanced efficiency of the legal processes in the country. Various other reforms introduced in the system by you will go a long way in the annals of judicial history of this country. These reforms reflect your vision for a modern technology-driven judiciary which has been widely recognized. Such tireless efforts in modernizing our judicial system and unrelenting passion for opening windows for access to justice has indeed been commendable and laudable. In fact, all this is in tune with your statement when you were sworn in as Chief Justice of India, that your priority will be to serve common man whose trust in judiciary will be strengthened through action, not merely by words. I have no doubt whatsoever that your legacy will endure not only in the judgments rendered, but also in the countless lives you have influenced and the values you have instilled in all of us. I find it fair to say that one who has devoted his entire life to this great institution of judiciary will not be retiring. We all expect it will not be long before you will return to the cause of justice, of course, in a different role. We will miss you greatly, but we shall not forget the lessons that you taught by your words, more importantly, by your example. As you embark on a new innings of your life ahead, we celebrate your dedication, wisdom, contribution to the society at large, and the judiciary in particular. Your influence will continue to resonate within the hallowed halls of our legal system to the sheer benefit of the future generations. Uh, Justice Chandrachur, while in Lucknow, developed a taste for Urdu poetry, and therefore, I will conclude my address today by reciting a couplet. Sitaron ke aage jahan aur bhi hain, abhi ishq ke imtahan aur bhi hain, tu shahi hai, parwaz hai kaam tera. Shahi means a high-flying bird. Parwaz means to fly. Tu shahi hai, parwaz hai kaam tera, tere saamne asma aur bhi hain. We wish you joy, peace and fulfillment in all your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice Upadhyay.